No, that, he doesn't even say that at first. What, you hated it? It kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, I wasn't prepared okay. for a performance. Honest question. Am I a weeb? <laughs> Maki Kaka. All right, fine. <laughs> well, but, I mean, who isn't to something? <laughs> what? I'm saying obviously weeb in the in the truest sense is the whole Japanese like because the thing that's odd thing, to me but... is I I mean we've, I think we discussed this once in brief before but it's like because I made the comparison to what the word gamer used to be it's like that used to be a niche term and now it's like you've played a game you're a gamer it's like no yeah, okay. it's also a dumb term that people use as a pop culture like buzzword to be like I'm cool. I have a I, Twitch. Come watch me. Well, okay, I'm just I mean, a, that counts if you're if it's literally like that's how you really make your money. No, but see, they, they, you've got a bunch of girls on there that are playing that don't even actually play games, and they just sit there going, "Look at me and talk to me, please." You yeah. know I'm right. Yeah, yeah, I guess that we need a we need a clarificatory. I don't. But even then, it's like okay, I that know guys. That makes me sound like a massive misogynist, but <laughs> well, darn, no, I mean, there's, darn females there are, on there Twitch. There are female gamers, and then there's those people. Right, exactly. They're just females. They're not. Have, they could be sitting watching nothing, and they would still have those same followers. I would, I have mad respect for actual proper female gamers. Why? Because I think it's cool. Like I would say that my wife actually games and does a decent job at playing the games that we play. But it's like then there are people that you go, no, you. But why massive it. respect? Well, I just go. I, that's cool. Like if you if you're genuinely online and you're not trying to do the whole, I'm pushing my own like how. Oops. <laughs> Well, there's that. Sure. Well, because sometimes it's even in the thumbnail. You're just like, woman, you are trying. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's what I'm getting at. It's like if watch you're just me play to... games in a tank top. <laughs> and by that I mean watch me in a tank top. <laughs> that's how we needed to start doing this. We need to get body cams, not face cams. We'll just start wearing tank tops <laughs> with no face. And the thing is, some people won't know. Some people will hold out hope and just think maybe they're just small. Wow. Hey, there's 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 simps in every category. <laughs> Apparently there's a whole subcategory of now get I, this is going to I want to know this. We're going to we're going to go into I a weird I want to we're know go into a weird video for this one apparently. Um, Don't make me there's a whole anything. weird subcategory on on OnlyFans that's like purely guys' hands because apparently that's a thing for women. Like it's a turn on. Like guys have. Well, I've known that as a category. Like that's one of the. It's like forearms and hands are a no, thing. Women I mean, are like. But specifically, like. But it's. Men, uh, but I didn't like think that there was any. Hand. See, I didn't know it was this deep. I thought it was just like women liked strong like a, hands. Like, like there's literally like forums that it's like that. That are like, oh, is this an attractive hand? No, because it's this. You don't. You want okay, rugged, but, is but this not like Reddit or is this? You said OnlyFans. That means women are paying for this. Yeah, no. There's literally like, oh yeah, I could just literally take a picture of my hand. But the thing is, and where would these forums be? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if I could make money for doing literally nothing. Well, but I guess I, I don't know if I have the right kind of hands. Well, that and I go, I'd still. I have moderately me, veiny hands. Not yeah, like it is the vi it is the viscosity thing. It is a, a, a weird <laughs> viscosity or not, is not no, the what word. Is it called? I have gelatinous hands. No, it, it's a venous no, intravenous. A, in, no, vascular. Vascular. It is a vascular thing because I the, it is. I the, don't want to. I can I knew that this was a thing, but I didn't realize it was this much of a it thing. It was. Yeah, it's a weird thing. <laughs> I don't want to know about the thing. <laughs> anyway, I guess I just have to accept the weebishness because again, it's like. None of that has to do with weebishness. <laughs> well, Let's we, clarify. Well, that's how not... we all started with this. We were talking about... <laughs> there's, there's the, the, there's uh, the weird the reason furry I make side the... of weebs, and that's not... I, there, or I thought that was were totally separate categories. No, it's the Sonic ten, fans, isn't it? Yeah, it's the Sonic is... fans. It's always the Sonic fans. <laughs> no, because you can... It do... is. But, I mean, anime starts in no, a fairly, a fairly I don't... benign state and then it so does sonic up, and then it ends up digressing very quickly i don't like know. you get into because it because here's the thing i knew guys in high school who would only ever play like call of duty online with their small group of friends and i'm like that's just a gamer no i don't think it is because you could tell it's like these guys did this not but it's i don't 
I've never understood the online capacity of any of those games. I find it very uninteresting. Sure. And so it's almost, it's like, this is more of just your guys' social gathering. You guys don't, and maybe this is me just being a old school gamer where I'm like, no, games are not that. (laughs) Why? I don't know. I've always, I don't know. This is just, now we're going to get into my deep-seated hatred for the Modern Warfare online lobbies. (laughs) Because <laughs> I just find that to be so. It's like if, if it's like a fourteen-year-old plays. Uh, uh, what's the game all the fourteen-year-olds play? It's not PUBG. They've moved on from that. Oh, you're Fortnite. About, yeah, Fortnite. That's like you're not. Sorry, no, you're not. That's not a game. It's an activity toy for toddlers. <laughs> so you're not a gamer. You're fourteen. <laughs> Wow. So I'm holding this. I think I'm just holding a very old school standards where it's like nowadays it's like, have you played a game? Then you're a gamer. Yeah, that's true. And I disagree. And I feel like there's a similar digression where it's like, well, have you watched you an anime? Fun. You're a Wii. But I'm like, if okay, play- I guess if that's the catch all. No, but- to me, that's not the catch all. But I mean, the the it's a slippery slope from I've watched a few animes to I'm reading graphic novels. <laughs> so you haven't gone that far. What? I don't know about I haven't. That. I have like actual comic books, but those aren't manga comic books. Those are Western sure. comic well, books. Well, manga is a whole And I have level. two of them. Well, no, that's what Japanese well, yeah. comic books are called. But I. Well, oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, my. Those are Legend of Zelda, <laughs> and those were given to me. <laughs> it just occurred to me I was looking at the show. <laughs> They're the Zelda. It's the Zelda graphic novel, which, because it was made in Japan, <laughs> I didn't spend money on them. <laughs> no, but I, I think... Uh, I'm going to have to give them back now and be like, I can't accept this. <laughs> well, I, I, my comment originally is like, it, it doesn't matter what category of weeb you are, or this if you're... Because again, what... The cinnamon stick has absorbed water in one end, and so it's now become a cinnamon spike. <laughs> It's what? like it, the the bottom half is ex- expanded and the top is shrunk. Oh, um, you bite it now. It's soft. I mean, I soft dish, but I still wouldn't do it. Um, no, the uh, you know, you're gonna have like again the whole. I'm more. I have a higher affinity for like Chinese culture, but it's like okay, well, that's gonna. There's that's, no word for that though, is there? No, there isn't. We've made one up that's terrible, <laughs> but. It's well, why'd you have to tell them that? Cause well, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm just saying, well, then don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I just think that you're going to, you're going to have weird fan fans that are like beyond just, Hey, yeah, I'm a fan of this. It's like, no, it's you're like, obsessed. Would, well, it's like, yeah, I would never put up I would posters say, of these things. Right. That's where I would say you're now in it. Well, okay. <laughs> Point. That was none, none of these are anime. <laughs> This the, Arcane is not an anime. I agree. and I'd like to point out I painted that myself. I understand. So that's not like I, I that's. I still feel like you're digging yourself here. Well, because just, Arcane's not an anime. It's I, it's an animated show. Those sure. aren't the same. That's true, and that is a line that I think needs to be distinct as well. Because I feel like people, it is some distinct. people, well, some people though act like ah, uh, if it has a similar artistic style. Well, at all, okay, there's there's an argument to be made that it doesn't have to be made. Doesn't have to be made. Doesn't have to be made in Japan to be an anime, and that's there's valid. Like the Avatar to some people is an anime because it's deliberately trying to be that style and technically it was made by a korean studio but it was written by a western company so it's like that's a toss-up from what i gather it's only people in the west who don't consider an anime and japanese people are like yeah of course (laughs) because they're not as weirdly strict about these things so what is it to be on the opposite end what is it to be a japanese person that's obsessed with western culture are you they might have a word for it i'm sure they do i don't know what it is you're, you're a... uh, okay, maybe I know what it is, but I'm, I'm going to have to look up. There's a word that comes to mind, but I'm not sure I'm, I know the correct definition of it. And see, the fact that I, the fact that I even know these things, that's, this is where I'm having to accept. It's like, okay, I guess I know more than someone who's never watched an anime would know. <laughs> so, fine. All right. I'd like All right, to point fine. out that we I am understand. probably the least... I am the I am the least insufferable weeb. That is true. If I have to be a weeb, at least let me have this. 
Um. Yeah. What? I, I, what? This. I mean, this kind of digresses into the line of you know, because we were talking about the whole Twitch so thing. It's not it's exactly like, the same. The word "gyaru" is a sort of. It's not explicitly Western, but it's kind of a. It's a sort of Japanese subculture of. <sighs> It's a kind of like high fashion, but it's sort of semi-westernized fashion culture. It would basically be, I'm trying to think of what the equivalent is in the West. And I don't know. I feel like it's just the average middle school. <laughs> as long as you're not calling yourself an otaku, I think you're okay. Yeah, but see, that's, I because that, that actually does have a very strict meaning in Japanese culture. Where it's like, no, this is, I'm obsessed with this thing and you can be an otaku about anything. It's not explicitly anime yeah, but there. Yeah, people that call themselves otakus rather than weeaboo. Well, as if they want, as are, if that's better. It's like the fact yeah, that you like, know that this is a better word just means you're a weeaboo. I don't know. <laughs> All I'm saying is the fact I that I know to... it. I think I may be giving myself away too. Well, <laughs> okay. I don't know. Well, see, like, what? I don't feel like it counts because it's like I I haven't even watched any of the famous ones. The most famous anime I ever watched was. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. Which was fairly famous, but that's several years old at this point. That's like a decade old. We're old school. That's actually Weird. almost coming up on 20 years old. So it's like, wow, that's I haven't crazy. watched any of the, like the, one the big piece. ones. Uh, I've what's never the watched other one? the famous, I've never watched Attack on Titan. I've never watched One Piece or any of, or Naruto. I mean, that's old too, but. Naruto's I've watched, but that's. I didn't. Not a lot of them. I didn't. I don't know. I just don't know Does what. Dragon I don't Ball know what Z the count. I guess it does has it? to, doesn't it? Wouldn't it? If it does, then I guess I am a weeb. Well, but I'm, did you watch that a lot? I did. I mean, Dragon just because it was Z on TV, or were you like yeah. big into it, or was like, no, oh. I was never like serious into it. See, it I was... feel like the level of severity of being into it is what makes the difference. But that's so impossible to quantify. That's true. Are we literally just talking over a black screen? This is what we... No, it's not even recording the screen. <laughs> oh, I'll, find, okay. I'll have to find some random thumbnail like I have been. Those thumbnails, they haven't been doing as well. Apparently people like the the absurd comic strips better than the uh, random ones we've been doing the last couple of days. The absurd... What? Because <laughs> I used to do the weird AI generator, and it was usually just I would give a prompt for like two people arguing with a random theme. <laughs> so it was like two Greek people arguing over something. Two, uh, two Roman, Roman statues. The last piece of bread. <laughs> well, no, there you go. That's what I'm going to give that to the AI and see what it comes up. With. But then the last couple of weeks, one. last couple of weeks, we made obscure references, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'll use that as a thumbnail." And apparently, they don't scan. People are like, I think they just confuse people more than they treat people. <laughs> but that kind of makes it better. <laughs> What? It, you might think that, but YouTube says no. <laughs> YouTube, People don't click on it them. It doesn't make YouTube better, yeah. I'm just trying to come to grips because I don't know where I stand. The world... I used to be with it, then they changed what it was. <laughs> now what I'm with is no longer it. Now what's it is weird and scary to me. <laughs> the world is changing. Anyway, I feel it in the... What is it? Not the water, but feel what it would in the weebs. <laughs> no, in the would it be the MIPS? What? You know, like like I don't even like know what speed, that means. Signal speed. You don't know what MIPS are? You talking about m megabytes per second? Yeah, I've never heard them called MIPS. That's yeah. Okay, <laughs> I've always called them MIPS. That's what they are. Because it would be Mbps. It's not Mps. I can run a speed test right now if you want, and it's Mbps or Kbps. Well, yeah, but. You I've heard them. The I've heard them jokingly referred to as killer beeps, but killa I don't. Beeps. But that's not in, or mega beeps, but I don't think that's serious. Mips. Mips. I've always just called them mips. I don't know. Maybe that's an IT thing because I did that. Maybe. Side of well, things. maybe they want to be more professional than mega beeps. <laughs> mega be You got somebody drilling underground out there. Yeah, there's fiber gets this many terra. Yeah, terra beeps. Terra beeps of. Info. Um, hey, who's getting that? Is that going to NASA? No, it's some some ba like we we. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, banks. Terabytes per second. Yeah. Oh yeah. If that's NASA. Get, not always. Like we had we had a sure you NASA worldwide always. bank or something like that that we had to deal with that was like literally the actual gauge on this this fiber optic line was literally like a foot. It was like 12 inches. I'm Googling. In diameter. 
Yeah. NASA has an internet speed of 178 terabytes per second. Or terabits. That's, that's, that's not absurd. terabytes. How much is a terabit versus a terabyte? I don't know. A bit that. is one and a bit eight bits is a byte. Or eight bytes is a bit, rather. So 178 terabits. Or is this just a misspelling? I don't know. I'm not going to get into the weeds on this. <laughs> <laughs> it got boring very fast. Uh, I'm just trying to think about it because there are definitely channels that I follow where I'm like, you would qualify. And this is why I come to you to be like, what's what's what are the anime kids saying these days? <laughs> So, well, I certainly that, feel out of touch in this community, so I don't feel like I'm one of them. Means that you're not probably one of them. Well, but I would say that that's the truth now for us. Just even just says in, if you watch one at all, it's like, well, okay. But isn't that the truth with gaming now? We're a bit. That's, old but I don't like that. that. I don't agree like, with the idea of calling everybody who plays a game a gamer. Well, but I mean, then you got people that play like Rocket League, for instance, where it's like they've played one game, but they actually make money doing it. How can you? It's that's guess, a hard. That was my, that's what I think. That's what your impression of Rocket League is. Just, oh, it's a, I don't have any issues with the game itself, but I mean, I just, I don't know. The category feels useless nowadays. Well, that's certainly true. Especially with. I guess the question is, is there, <laughs> is there any anime I've watched that I would be embarrassed to admit? Is that the threshold? Because I don't think that's the threshold for games. Because <clears throat> most gamers aren't, don't have shame. <laughs> So I'm not sure you'd be like, what's the, what's, hey, is no it maybe what, if you, game. if you've played a game for this many hours straight, now you're a gamer. Maybe, I don't know. Cause that's kind of how it used to be. It was an unspoken thing of like, yeah, it's like I spent this entire weekend playing a game and I don't mean that figuratively. <laughs> it's like, I, I lost the entirety. Like of the, the only thing I did well this weekend that wasn't play the game was eat and sleep and everything else was play the game. I've I had dreams about playing games. I didn't sleep. Literally, I have actually, it's been multiple, like, separate games that I have had dreams about playing because I've been playing them so much recently. <laughs> so it's like, I feel like I, I would comfortably accept the gamer designation because it's like, yeah, I feel like I am well-versed enough in that community that I could have a conversation with just about anyone who likes games and we could, yeah, we have a shared knowledge of the space. Yeah. I don't feel that way with anime people at all. I'm like, I, I watched like this one. Broad. It was all right. Isn't it too broad? But I guess you well, can say that about is too games, broad. too. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. <clears throat> Anime, I just feel like, is so... There's so many genres... Well, really what it comes down to is weebs don't agree amongst themselves, which is why I find that one uh, college humor bit hilarious where it's like the panel of all of the... the where they're at the Comic-Con and is they're like the trying to... I've it's not the, you the you're a freaking yes it is and i find it hilarious because it is all these weird subsets of weeb culture that's like okay this this why that's not, but comic con's not an inherently weeb thing you're doing the same thing it if a guy goes to comic con dressed as deadpool i'm not going to assume he's well, a weeb that's certainly true there might be some crossover but it's not a guarantee i mean deadpool maybe <laughs> that's because it's deadpool but it's like okay if someone goes as some other you know marvel character i'm not going to jump you're immediately freaking in Yasha, why would you lie? <laughs> but see, that's my point. It's like there's there's all this weird, no non Digimon versions of Digimon creatures. It's like it it's a weird. There's so many odd brackets and branches because then you have all the Pokemon slash Digimon. That's where the furries are. Well, it, maybe is there? A, I don't want to know. I was about to ask a question. Is there a Pokemon specific furry subgroup, and I'm sure there is. <laughs> well, it's Rule Thirty Four. <laughs> no, because that's just no. That's not the same. It no, because that no, because that's not projecting yourself into it. Whereas, like, it's a furry is like I am this thing. So is it's like, it? Yes, it's like I. This is my. That's what the whole concept of the first fursona is. It's like this is my well, alternate okay, fursona. That's what a fur. I... Have you not heard this term? No. Oh, you didn't know the furry rabbit hole went worse. It's a it's, it's a bad worse place. Than I it's a bad place. Persona. It's literally like, oh, this is my alternate self. Is this? <laughs> I didn't think you didn't know this. Well, I knew this is why everyone weird. makes fun of them because they're wax. Well, sure, but I didn't. Okay. You didn't realize how wax. 
<laughs> don't. Don't. Do it. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, I am sure that if you fi- if you wanted to find it, there was a Pokemon specific furry category of life. But see, this is how old I am. I was in the I, like. Where are you going with this? I was there at when it was written. It was I was there when, when what Pokemon was, written? was the first born. Pokemon slash fic. No, I I wrote I was, it. I was yeah, I wrote it. I was there when the original Pokemon was made, and Digimon was like the. It was the, a knockoff. It still is. Well, but it's like it the cheap, is. like, I'm sorry. It's what? dime stored Pokemon. It is. And <laughs> then you have Yu-Gi-Oh! that was like in on the coat table. I don't know. This is, I, none of this was my gen- I didn't know any See, of this. See, so I'm just older. Maybe I know. Well, you are stuff. older than me. That is well, true. But I, I, knew, I know of Dragon Ball Z now. I don't think I would have ever known about it, it at the time. It was bigger back when I was a kid. Naruto, though. I didn't know about it at the time. Naruto's more big. That's more my gen... If I had gotten into anime at a young age, it yeah. would have been around the time of Naruto, but I didn't. I would say Dragon Ball Z Because my parents early. loved me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, Dragon Ball Z definitely was more my era, for sure. Because well, didn't it start in like the late 80s? It's been yeah, around it was, a long it time. it was a long time. Yeah, it's been I don't know. He did. I'm I pretty sure the guy that goes home to Starlet Night was listening to, and was watching Dragon Ball Z. It was what? It it's from Napoleon Dynamite. It's the weird the weird guy with the the parachute pants that are American flagged. I don't know that movie very well. Yeah, it's a weird movie. Uh right, well I don't know how much we can milk out of that. I just I it's been a, I've been having a crisis of identity. I think you're just finally coming to terms with I mean, it depends on who, because I think that's the weird thing is I feel like someone who doesn't watch any anime would be like, they'd look at me and think, well, you must be because you know more than them. But I'd be like, I look at other people and I'm like, there's people who know way more than me. It's a fluency thing, isn't it? It's, it's I can't help but feel like it is. Be, it is. because you have to, like, There has to be a shared bank of knowledge. That right. Be, that means you could reference things and you, the other person's going to get it. A non-Spanish speaker that like, strictly speaks English is going to call me fluent in, in Spanish, but it's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Talk to the guys that actually are. That's like, you know... And well, it's so, like, even if I'm not like the most well-versed gamer, I know I there I'm plugged into the discourse online. So it's like, I know about stuff that I've never played because I watch, I gather that info. What do you, do you use discord? No, I don't actually, I've never understood it. I tried to sign up for it and I was like, this is just a generational gap. It must be. Yeah. Cause I don't think in this kind of, it's almost like we've reverted to chat rooms again. I'm like, yeah, I, it, yeah. I, that, I never was part of that age and I don't think I want to be. Because how could you have any meaningful conversation? It's essentially just like a private Twitter thread. Wow. It is essentially like Twitter where you're, you're just selling something now, into though, nothing. I, I did chat rooms back when it was dial-up. You had to sit there waiting for the dial tone to go on for a minute before you See, got in. See, what was in. the point? Because forums actually make a degree of sense because it's relatively ordered. And it's like, here's the thing I'm asking about. Here's people giving answers. But a, I can honestly but a chat that. room is literally, is it not basically just like a a miniature Twitter where it's like, I'm just going to say something well, but that's your... into the void and maybe some people will respond. But other people are also saying things into the void. So we're all just shouting our own opinions. Chat and hoping... rooms were a little more regulated than, and, and organized than that because you, I think you're... you're your generational none of the discords i've ever tried have been very regulated so maybe well, this is... my point is in original chat rooms it was like you're in this chat room because you are either in this this locative bracket or like this age bracket or this whatever and so it's like it was a little bit more like you weren't just sending it out into the ether it was like okay yeah well... but i mean it was still just a there was no just there was no thread no, Again, that's, that's true. even that's a no, forum term where it's like say, there's no logic. Yeah, no, that's exactly that dictates right. this is what we're talking about. It's no, that's just, very true. People could do that. Just send I don't out. Get that. I I Discord doesn't make any sense to me because I'm just like, is it just I? Pfft. Unless uh, it makes some sense when it's very small, when it's literally just like this is essentially just becomes a chat group for a small. It's just like a group message. Yeah. But when it's like, oh yeah, there's thirty thousand people in this. I'm like, well. What kind of meaningful conversations could be had here? Yeah. This is why I don't have Twitter either, because I'm like, I don't feel like, here, let me package a 30-word sentence and fling it into the void and see what happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't look it. I'm beginning to feel it in my heart. I'm beginning to feel it in my hard drives. <laughs> uh, well... 
But no, well, so I think we that... may or may not be. Yeah. You. Not so much. Probably safe. Probably safe. Yeah. When they come first, they came for the weeps. <laughs> I said nothing for I was not a weep. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think. What was your topics? That was I just wanted to. That the. I don't know what I thought you would help me with because. Well, I mean, it's a bit of a. I feel like I would have to, it would have crisis. to, I feel like maybe the only real definitive answer could come from someone who is like a self-avowed weeb. <laughs> and then they could evaluate me and be like, no. And I'd be like, thanks. <laughs> Just to, 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 to put, put your mind at ease. Well, cause that's the thing is someone who doesn't know, I'm like, well, you don't know. So I don't know that you would know enough to know that I am or am not. Yeah. 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 Well, that's why I say it's a weird, it's a, it's a language thing. That is, that is the interesting thing about the subculture of the internet and just the whole, you know, being connected constantly is, is that things change and language change at rapid speed. It's like, yeah, even on a pop culture thing, like back when I was doing actual ministry uh, work with young people, it was the like youth. with the use. Then I did find out that you know it's like okay, well this. You is never the, knew that furries were. Well, I mean, I'm surprised sure. you didn't come across that by accident. I I think I intentionally didn't come across that, but I mean, I knew some of the pop culture kind of references and was certainly not behind. How, now, how do you do, fellow say, kids? Now people literally say things, and I'm like, I have literally no idea what that means or what you're saying to me. I find it's like they're it's... trying to speak to me. Yeah, I but I actually find that there's a there's a performative aspect to it hard. now. Oh, one hundred percent. Now I'm going to try to be the person who comes up with the next word, and it's like because you're trying, you won't be. Yeah, they always stem from something that was unintentional. At least the ones that stick. Yeah. So I don't know. I just it's, it's all a mess. It's a cancer. Yep. I don't get it. The internet was a great thing, and social media sucks. That's what all. That's my hard line. Hmm. Cause the thing is that there, I, a lot of stuff that I value and and like to do is only possible because of the internet. Sure. But social media ruins everything. People, what? most of all. <laughs> well, that yeah, that's the truth of it. But what what is different then about like email slash instant message? I mean, AOL used to be a thing, and that never was an issue. Because they never called it social media. I think it's actually the branding itself that's the issue. It's like no. When you were on a forum, you knew that it was an asocial activity. You were gaining information. Yes, it was from other people, but it was not an interpersonal reaction, interaction. But AOL Whereas, was. Yeah, but it's like, okay, a letter in that case, is that a social thing? I wouldn't call a letter a social thing. Oh, Therefore, an true. email is no different. That's true. So it's like, this is not the same. It's correspondence. And I think people knew that, that whereas now there's this idea that, well, because I see your face on the page that I'm writing the letter to. Now it's like I'm talking to you, but it's like, no, you're not. You are sitting behind a screen and they are sitting behind a screen. Well, so there is no interaction happening here. There was no, I, I think there was no delusion back when you were sending emails back and forth. You knew it was correspondence. Even if it was an instant message, it's like, okay, but it's still correspondence. It's like you're, there's. You're, I think it, it, the reason it, the issue went from you use the thing to do the action to you are the thing doing the action. It's like I your social media page is like you, you is a you. Yeah, that's weird. And people identify with it to such a degree that it's like there is this online existence. Whereas back in the day that didn't exist. It was like yes, we use this as a For tool, or whatever but my ex, my existence persona. is external to the computer. Whereas nowadays it's like no, my existence, if anything, is mostly in the computer. That's psychotic. And that's though. but that's what social media does is it it try it conflates where it says you're not just using the device as a tool for communication, you are the device and the tool of community. It's like no, that <laughs> you're is, the tool. You are <laughs> yes, but for not for different reasons. <laughs> I don't know. Now we're it's, I don't now I'm getting into my luddite square. Well, but it's not even luddite. It's because you again you made the distinction. It's not the internet that's the problem, or even technology. It's the fact. Well, people are the problem, but. That's what else is new, but I think the, the, <clears throat> when you, my, when you send my, a text message, my fill up of cider, when you, when you send a text message, 
or call or do something like that, I'm go- I I go, you know that you're communicating a with a group of people or a single individual that you know in person and you're trying to actually just have a back and forth conversation with. When you put stuff when you especially people that get on social media and then they start interacting as if that's a place to meet people and see I'm going to get a ton of people getting on here and like backlash about oh I met my spouse on social media and that's what and I'm going it's not that it's impossible it's just that it's not healthy <laughs> I think it depends on how because back because I feel like the dating so, the though? online dating services existed before the dating apps and they tended to be okay. I think that's actually... You can make the argument that really smartphones is where it all went wrong. Because before then, the internet was you had not always with you. Yeah, it was like it. the computer was a tool. And unless you were someone who just really couldn't regulate your life and you were just in front of it all the time. Right. You had to but sit down and... In order to be in front of it all the time, yeah. you had to neglect everything else in your life. Whereas nowadays, you can... I mean, you are still neglecting everything else in your life, but you, it's not as obvious right. that you're doing you're that. You're fooling yourself even into thinking that you somehow you have... Here's the here's the rub I have with even, like, events that we, we were talking about last time about... Okay, the, when it's cold, it's less pleasant. <laughs> I thought it would stay warmer for we longer. We were talking about, uh, you know, the whole idea of traditions within holidays and things like that. But I find... Even in switching back to the iPhone, my phone stayed in my pocket until somebody asked that I actually take out and take a picture because I go, I want to enjoy the experience. I'm not here to take pictures. That's not what I'm here for. Yeah. Like, we went out and did a thing, and I'm going, okay. You're literally, like, post... Again, it's going to come off like... I think it's... Maybe, I think you can... have a problem with, like, Instagram stories and things like It's like, I, I don't do. have a problem with it. I kind of do. I don't care. But it's... The, Nothing is it, shared there that benefits anyone. Well, I think it's it's beneficial to share your life if you no. are creating It's a, only beneficial to share your life with people who will meet you. Well, that's my point. That's the Randy Feld place. Anybody who cares about your head will at some point encounter it in person. Yeah. But that's kind of my... my but I mean, it, the, the irony of that statement for him is that there are many people that know his head that don't no him you know what i mean no but that's different because that is that whole thing is a performative act right but i'm just saying he's become very prolific across platforms because of the fact that that reach has been able to be you know so again I don't the argument is the people who care will eventually see him at some point if they can i think the rub we should look up when he's coming because that would actually be fun i think the rub for me is is exactly what you said. When you sit down at a computer, you know that is what I'm doing. And I think that distinction has to be made. Like, for instance, if I go out to an event, uh, was it today? Yeah, today. We went and we. <laughs> what have I done today? <laughs> we cut down our, a tree for um, Christmas, and you go, there were people out there that were primarily putting Instagram stories and taking pictures and doing things like that. And I'm like, okay, the rub with that is you are fooling yourself into thinking that you're here doing this event when you're actually just creating a story. That is what you're doing. Well, and that's depends. weird. I mean, that's a strong statement maybe, but I just go, you're you're doing both poorly or you're doing one well and the other very poorly. <laughs> it's like, you can't have both. And I think so maybe we've narrowed it down that it's smartphones that suck. It's not the internet. Well, yeah, it's the idea that technology needs to be in your face at all times, which is the whole Google Glass, like... Well, this used to be a dystopian nightmare. It's 1984, it was literally like, yeah, the screen has to be in your house and it can never be turned off. And now we're like, give me the screen, never turn it off. <laughs> well, I was actually weirded out by that you can now on the new iPhones, they, there's a setting where they don't turn off. Like well, the, the screen does not. By like the way, close. that setting was always there. They no, just didn't know, tell you about it. I, I know. I mean, I know it's currently on even right now. But I'm saying, like, when you hey, Siri. turn the screen off, say something, say something offensive to the Chinese. <laughs> what? Talk about <laughs> Tiananmen Square. <laughs> wow. No. Okay, this is not a joke. Okay. Well, I mean, oh, I saw it on the internet, so this it's is not a I joke. I don't think it's a joke, but it it was on the internet, so take it with a grain of salt. But it sounds like the kind of thing that would absolutely be true is if you ever playing an online game and you know that the opponents or at least someone on the enemy team is Chinese 
just type in chat Tiananmen Square 1988 or 19 whatever date it was. And literally people, again, these could be fake screenshots, but there have been screenshots of people like in a CSGO or in Team Fortress True or some random online game. You just type that in the chat and then like three or like a third of the server will suddenly be like, oh, all these characters, all these players timed out. Because apparently, according to this, which may or may not be true, if you even type that anywhere on your computer, the CCP will shut your internet access. And I'm like, I can't prove that this is true, but it does sound like the kind of thing that would be true. So the screenshots may be faked, but I, I'm i not sure that they are yet. But I, mean, I guess I would have to try it myself sometime. That was a weird thought. The other thing that I was weirded out by when I f first... What, Tiananmen this? Square? What no, are we no. talking about? No, the, the whole, like, the fact that it doesn't turn off concept. Oh, yeah, it's just messed but up. the other thing that was weird about this when I first got the new one is that I realized that it starts, the setting starts with, it was only ringing one time. And I thought it was, like, glitching. I was going to take it in. I was going, what is going on? Well, it turns out it has some weird face recognition where if I look at the phone and see that it's ringing, it stops ringing. Because it, it sends something called, like, attention, like, awareness, where it knows that I'm looking at the phone, therefore it doesn't need to ring anymore. I'm like, that's psychotic. Well, they've always done that, though. Because no. that's how they no, that's how they do the thing where it's like it was the, you don't have to have to push the button, you can just hold it up. No, that's... And it'll know that you're looking at it, so it'll turn on. Right, that's weird. I don't get it. I, don't I, don't get, I don't even get now. the appeal of any of this stuff. No, exactly. Mm. Other than just... Ease, which again is why I, I go. Ease. What they're doing, well, that is that in itself is contempt of pleasure. Day. Bring back the Spartans. Yep. That's <laughs> we've talked about the Spartans before, and I immediately jumped to the face again. <laughs> that did that did that that was on the... that was one of those ones that confused too many people. So, <laughs> I mean, in fairness, I want to see it so bad. I miss. I haven't I mean, looked. I could. I could Pull up the thumbnail. I have it saved somewhere. Um, I'm not going to use it again, though. No, of course not. I wasn't even sure. I was actually a little bit concerned at first. I'm like, is YouTube going to take offense to this? <laughs> I don't think they should, but they might. Um, I, it, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, too many people were thrown off by that one. <laughs> Is this just going to get... Are we just going to sit around here talking about how much times are changing? Well, that's... Oh, the, that oh, time the times they are, are getting worse. Yeah. I... Because I actually would appreciate... Like, I... Well, I, when I was a kid, I didn't understand the internet, and I feel like if I was in the culture that was around then, where the internet was still kind of like, ooh, a novel thing, I feel like I would be better in that now that I know, like, this is how I wish the internet was still, but I didn't, it was at this point once in my life, and I didn't know about it at the time, and I wish that I was in that I wish we had that view of it, and I think we will eventually, because I think eventually people are going to wake up, but it's going to take, it's going it's gonna to take some kind of a cataclysm. With what, though? Is I don't it know. Really... And it's like in a third of the next generation being developmentally disabled because of internet access or something like that. It's wow, probably going to happen. That's it's, severe. It's, it's probably going to be something like, yeah, it turns out this entire generation of children never reached a queue as above 100 <laughs> or something tragic. Be like, oh, okay, yeah. Mark this one in the history books. Lead in the water pipes, bad. Giving children cell phones, also bad. <laughs> <laughs> Lead paint, not good. <laughs> Putting tablets in front of your three-year-olds right away and never loving them. <laughs> That's wow. terrible. That jump. <laughs> no, I, uh, I think, I mean, it's easy. The, the, the balance I struggle with is I don't consider myself to be one of those people that as I age, I go, progress is bad. That's not what I feel. It's... It is the quote that I liked, and I don't know where it comes from, but it is, it is not... Uh, blind opposition to progress, but opposition to blind progress. Because hmm. it's just like just because you don't you, know who quoted that. Or or who? I don't know who said that, but it's basically just like you don't just want a new thing because it's a new thing. You'd want a new thing that's a better thing. Right. And sometimes we just think new equals better. It's like not always. Sometimes <laughs> new equals drastically worse. I don't think you need the word new. 
So, well, it's, that's that's the whole, but that's the whole consumer culture we live in. That is like toy, 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 toy. It's like this one's got a new. It's camera. gay. It's gay. We're getting demonetized for that for sure. <laughs> now, now it's changers. Brick and brick and brick and brick and brick and brick. It's gay. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Smartphones, get rid of them. It, yeah. The thing is, for my work, I had to switch back, and I do think in switching back, even engaging with other people on a non-work level, it is easier to be able to receive like things like photos from people or whatever that are going on. That I don't not appreciate. I actually enjoy that part of it. I mean, airdropping photos of like, hey, I took this picture of my, you know, son and I'm sending it to my wife right now or whatever it may be. That's fine. But I, again, I think at the point that the device becomes more than the actual event itself, there's a, there's a line from... I like that one. It's that one Apple commercial. Really just, just tell it all. I, well, I'm yeah, not going to be able to, I don't know that I'm going to be able to find exactly the specific one, but it's basically, the whole point is, it's a view of like what your phone looks like all the time. And it's literally just a handheld view. It's a person's hand holding a phone and the entire commercial is framed from that point of view. It's like you person's walking around, but all you're seeing is the hand and the phone. I'm like, this is really is what Apple thinks of you. Yep. You're not a person. You're a hand that holds a phone. Yep. And it's like, well, I guess they're telling you right now in the commercial, just, yep, this is what we think of you. Well, and that's, I, you are a thumb and a forefinger, and that's all we care about. <laughs> we want your thumb and forefinger. <laughs> I, I think, um, the, there's a scene from Walter Mitty, the movie. Yeah, you, we keep referencing this. It's weird it. how we were down to that one. Well, because it's perfect. I, mean, I guess it does do it well. It but. does do it well because it's not even something about the internet. But it's it's this artist that literally is going, sometimes I don't even take the picture because there's times that just appreciating the nature and the beauty is better. Mm. It's, I mean, what could be more... That's a very... Uh, I feel that is a very Eastern understanding your role within the greater vastness that I just feel like I appreciate. <laughs> it's like, no, this, this, this isn't about you or anybody. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to, we're not going to end this one. <laughs> well, well, it's not quite ending time either, oh, but so this is going to make it. I'm just, I don't know how any of this is. I do think it's going to take some kind of a serious like, oh, yeah, it turns out there's massive tragedy that we just didn't. I don't know. A bunch of testicular cancer sometime down the line <laughs> from phones being in your pocket all day. Wow. Turns out when it's you have to be the new mesothelioma. <laughs> exactly. You'll be called 1-800-iPhone. In 2088, did you have a Model S iPhone and from the years <laughs> this to this, do you have testicular cancer? <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't know that. I mean, that, that people make did too much a deal of <laughs> radio waves of like, oh, well, it's radio yeah. waves are going to give you cancer. It's, I don't know that that's any science behind that. Well, even but, the development, like the venom. Hey, what about thalidomide? We didn't know that would backfire, but it did. Exactly. Well, no, it's it, even on a developmental level. It's like it's, it is the whole like, what if we find that old people like the whole there's a part of me that goes Alzheimer's may just run rampant you Probably. Go, like that. You know what I mean? It's like, did you or a loved one experience Alzheimer's because they've been using well, iPhones? You and your I don't think anyone with Alzheimer's is going to watch a commercial and know that they're the one with Alzheimer's. I think it's me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, who knows? It's 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 gonna we're gonna find out, I guess. But it isn't. It may not be pretty. Is all I'm. The saying. fact that you and I are gonna actually be on a generational wave, probably to see that. Like, okay, so this is a probably an interesting topic that we could carry for a bit. I my uh, if you try to hold that, put it in there, and it drops through, <laughs> that would be interesting to look at for a couple seconds. <laughs> um. I uh, I always have appreciated talking to my great-grandmother because she lived in a 
time period that she was literally born before the advent of the car and mm. died at the age that there was a computer in your pocket. <laughs> it's like, that's a remarkable gap of time. Well, someone made the crazy comment that, like, for several thousand years, the chariot was the fastest way of getting anywhere. And then within 100 years, it went from chariot, car, train, you know, uh, larger, like, planes, and then rocket. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so it's like okay so the maximum speed a human was capable of was for about you know a 98 percent of human history like maybe as fast as a horse maybe like 20 30 miles an hour and then suddenly within 100 years it went from that to like 20 mach 25 <laughs> and it's like okay so that all happened in 100 years no wonder we're not we don't know what we're doing because we all realize oh we can't quite sustain this <laughs> Okay, that happened. <laughs> it's the girl soul. Because here's, it's like the one was the locomotive invented in like 18 something. Yeah. So that was the fastest thing. That was actually probably always faster than the car now that I think about it. So it's like, yeah, you went from. The train? Uh, trains could, I mean. Well, that's probably true. The earlier cars. Yeah, that's probably well, true. Well, yeah. And then even nowadays, trains well, go faster. The locomotives started on boats, didn't they? They Like the steam locomotive that. Well, no, steam Well, steam power was for boats, but it wasn't a locomotive until it was the railroad. But even then, it's like, okay, the average train went like maybe 50 miles an hour. It's like, okay, that was a big deal. And then it's like, yeah, we're just going to keep now Mach 25. <laughs> well, but that's my – so talking to those kinds of people, I, I always just appreciated her perspective because it was such a broad understanding of – progress the positive See, this would again be we got to bring back mechmet for this because <laughs> that, that would be the kind of thing you'd be like i've lived for eight thousand years and <laughs> seven thousand of those the fastest thing i could ever get on was a horse right and then suddenly it's like okay now there's people on the moon and i've got an a i've got a what would you what would you even think of it? it's like i have a small person who lives in my pocket who tells me things who knows all basically you'd have to be like okay so god lives in my pocket now I don't know what to make of this. I can imagine that would actually be a funny version of an immortal story being like, instead of him being the all-powerful one, it'll just be like, I've been alive for 8,000 years and I've never seen technological developments as fast as this. Yeah. I blinked and suddenly there's a god in my pocket and people are on the moon. Because <laughs> it's like, what's 100 years if you'd been around 8,000? Well, that's what I mean. You thought you'd be like, okay, so it was a horse and now, okay, the train and I don't know, and then I blinked and then there's people on a different planet. I didn't even know the planets were other Pretty things. Pretty sure the time continuum broke down somewhere. I don't know what happened. I thought those planets. I thought those things were just big holes in the sky. <laughs> now there's people in them. <laughs> I know. I think, like, knowing so that what I mean by that is I frame that and then I go, okay, I'm gonna have to appreciate my my life to go. I was, I was there before cell phones yeah. were even a thing at all. Like I remember using a rotary phone on a wall. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it's still rotary because we had a home phone. Yeah. I actually still think the home phone is a thing you need. Yeah, the home phone is what you give someone you don't want to be able to contact you all at all times. Yeah, it's like yeah, you can get a hold of me and leave a message, but I don't need you. Don't need to follow me around everywhere. No, that's well, not an even option. Even answering machines were new when I was younger. Like, but that whole, you know, again, I go looking at. I mean, we talked about it briefly with music the last the last time we were talking, but the, the idea of you go from <clears throat> no, no ability to communicate outside of literally pulling off on a rest stop and going, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, what is it called? A payphone right here to no payphones exist. And well, I mean, yeah, you like, wouldn't even be able to anymore. No, exactly. Like, cause people just assume everybody just assumes you are. I mean, the, 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 it's even worse. Cause you'd have to ask someone with a phone to borrow it and they'd probably wouldn't let you. Right. I've been in that situation where my phone has died and I'm literally like, I can't like back when I was working uh, at the weird kind of digital postal service, whatever, where you're oh. picking up parcels and doing random things. I literally had my phone die and I didn't have a charger in the middle of, you know, a run and I'm like I have no way of contacting this person telling my job that I'm not going to be able to p complete this run I literally just went back to the warehouse put all the stuff back and I'm like I can't do it so how did you, have a phone? Gonna have how did you not have a charger during that job I at the time I had somehow I had used a different car or something like that and I didn't have the ability to just go out and get a charger so it was like well I guess I'm done <laughs> like it, yeah 
That was a weird. That yeah, was I feel a like bad if you day. were if you were an immortal person, you'd be like, "Oh, y'all are screwed." <laughs> I yeah. I still know how to weave tapestries, man. I'll be fine when this collapses, but y'all are screwed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the whole idea of living off grid. There was a guy again that I think I've mentioned him before to you, but the whole uh, Andy's little homestead where he says one of the first things you can do in order to d- be sustainable and you know do the whole living off grid. People act like, oh, you got to cut. You know, all your ties with any sort of banking and things like that. It's like, actually, the best thing you can do to start is to pick up a trade. He's like, because nothing that's not a trade is going to matter at all if you are not, if you're outside of the actual sphere of everything being wired and everything else. You're going, it, yeah. So I... I'm just fascinated as to what this is going to look like on the back end because we'll we will see the downfall. I promise you, we will. Mm, probably, or uh, that's the other. Who knows? I mean, either will there will maybe be some opportunity of course correction with sufficient like well, tra- some kind of tragedy that's like, oh yeah, maybe we should stop this, or we won't know until it's too late. But who knows? Well, and obviously you have good significantly positive voices like, you know, Elon Musk going, yeah, that one of the things that scares me the most is AI <laughs> and I'm one of the ones that's doing it. So it's like, Oh, we could talk about that with some of the time we have left. Cause I want, I had a, I had a whole thing saved for that. You're talking about cars. No, no, no. AI, the whole thing. Cause I thought it was, I forget what prompted it now that I think of, Oh no, it was, it was, the, it was that, uh, the, the Jedi meditation videos I sent you. Oh, those were fantastic. Because honestly, I literally fell down that rabbit hole. Because so I honestly think that that what has been the most interesting is that everyone was afraid of AI, and then it came, and we just used it to make a either really funny stuff or actually surprisingly wholesome stuff. Which yeah, that's always how it starts, and then it's gonna. Get, I mean, well, no, it's I mean, already divulged. It's already yeah. Those, if, but I mean, in some ways, it gives you a little bit of hope. It's like. Again, we had the whole conversation during the like several episodes in which we discussed the whole AI concept. It's like it's only as dangerous as we make it. So it's in heart it's it's heartening to see that there are people who are making it positive. And I mean, in some ways it's actually a sad indictment of a way. It's like I've seen cuz those were in you know unique, I suppose I should clarify. There was some there's several channels, but one that I found which was literally just it uses the voice thing to make various star wars characters do like meditation videos and it's presented as if it's like this is a class in the jedi I temple would, being given by seriously recommend they're actually surprisingly they fantastic i actually think the, the one channel i like this one channel because it does a good job of like they all actually sound not just because obviously the voice is being digitized by the computer but the way they're written is good yeah. enough that it's like Correct. okay this does actually sound like this is how this character would talk correct so it feels awfully immersive. I'm like, this is actually surprisingly wholesome for this application. Especially if you have headphones. It literally is. I was like, like and being the, trained by Qui Gon. But Jinn see, the itself. other thing that the other thing that it this is the more sad one. It's positive, but it's still kind of sad. Where it's like there have been a lot of ones where it's like Batman helps you overcome your you know depression, or Batman gives you advice on you know facing fear, and it's like, okay, this is positive. It's also sad that people are making this because it means that this is what people need. It's like, yeah, what are the young generations crying out? They're just crying out for decent advice because <laughs> apparently they're not being given any by anyone in their lives. Yeah. And it's sad. It's it's wholesome, but sad that it's like, okay, it's good that there are, this is what characters like Batman or there have been several others. I haven't watched as many of those, but it's like, it's sad that this is required, but I guess it's positive that it is being fulfilled in a way. But it is, I don't know, it's an awkward state to be like, well. I think it will be interesting if that becomes a personalized option. Like if you could, for uh, instance, if you're like a uh, death of a grandmother and you could like somehow AI generate uh, some sort of an encouraging word from your grandmother, that that would be kind of That would feel like a violation in my opinion. Would it? Because that's a real person. Like, okay, Batman's a character and yes, the voice, but there's an argument to be made that when you... I mean, uh, this this gets into a whole big hairy can of worms of rights and hairy can of worms. whether or not you have the right to your own voice and whatnot. But it's like, I think even Kevin Conroy has to acknowledge that most people who hear him are hearing Batman. Sure. Like, I think he, 
and this may not be true for everyone, but for certain levels of iconic acting, it's like you have to know that people that like, you're going to be that character forever. Correct. Yeah. And I mean, now that he now, even now that he's gone, it's like, he's that's, he's still Batman to like a whole generation, several generations of yeah. people. No, that's true. So it's like, yes, it's his voice when people are doing this, but it's Batman. Yeah. It isn't, it, here's Kevin Conroy it, giving you a message from beyond the grave. Right. Cause that would in feel kind of creepy right. and in, it would feel disrespectful, but it's like, this is Batman in manner and kind. It and yes, it's his okay, voice, but yeah. he was Batman. Yeah. Everyone thinks of him as bad, or at least most people think of him as Batman. Well, and to be fair, he, he, and I mean, I think he would know that. I think he would leverage that himself as well. well yeah. So it's like, I think even, I mean, I, I can't at all speak for whether or not if he knew about it, he would be okay with it. But well, I mean, it's why obviously the whole credence of, of the actors guild going the See, whole to AI me, thing yeah, is not okay. It's if it becomes an exploitative thing where it's like, we're just not going to pay you because we've already got your voice. That's, that's just like, okay, that's exploitation. Right. But if it's, I mean, I go, maybe the, maybe the only way this survives is if it's always for free, which again, if people are doing it for on their own free time, it is. People are just sharing this online for free because they can. Yeah. And apparently because people need it, which is again, kind of sad. Right. But I don't know. I also find some of, I mean, some of the AI music stuff is deliberately like, okay, Mr. Crab singing some random Irish shanty. It's like, okay, this is just for funny. But there have actually been some that are like also quite wholesome in a way. And uh, I mean, one of the ones that's famous and the quote has has become famous in recent days. It was Freddie Mercury saying before he died, uh, basically telling the studio, it's like, whatever, you can take every, all of my work, remix it, re-release it, do whatever you want, as long as I'm not boring. <laughs> and so in that, that quote has become more famous now because people are actually doing that. And it's like, in some ways, that's kind of wholesome because... I like hearing Freddie Mercury sing random opera songs. Right. Because he, and in some ways it feels, I guess the the way it will have to be handled going forward is a matter of respect to the person. Right. And it's like he was art, a huge yeah, fan yeah. of opera. This was his sort of thing and he never actually recorded these, but right. it sort of feels right. It right. sort of fits. Right. Exactly. And I stand out. That's interesting that you can sort of get a glimpse of that. Yeah, the weirdest one. Word. It's like you're looking through a window. Well, I'll tell you the weirdest one. The vi it's very strange because it, it, it's not like a window. It's like looking into some kind of alternate dimension is Michael Jackson singing Stay With Me, which is a popular like 70s Japanese pop funk song. You may or may not have heard it because it's well known, even if it's even though it's all in Japanese. But <sighs> it's really weird because A, it's totally believable. Like it sounds like him because of course i mean the ai has gotten good enough nowadays but it's also sort of the thing where it's like this doesn't sound like the kind of song he wouldn't sing <laughs> i mean yes it's all in japanese but in an alternate world maybe he knew japanese and maybe because the thing is the fame the woman i forget her name now i'm not gonna try to remember it because i'll probably mispronounce it uh but she was like a famous sort of pop it's a kind of funky, his style was also kind of like that funk pop mix fusion. And so she was very famous in Japan and like the seventies and eighties for that same style of music and was heavily inspired by him. So it's like, I can almost imagine an alternate dimension, which like they met and produced like a duet of this song. Hmm. So it's just a really weird, like obviously, you know, Mr. Crab singing some weird Irish song. That's just a joke. Right. But this is like, no, this feels like it's right in the middle of like, I could see the universe in which this happened. Yeah. And well, that's so where it's, AI becomes interesting is when... Again, it's only going to be as dangerous as we make it. See, that's the, that's the terrifying thing is you got people that are, I guarantee you, it's a bit of the the Inception thing where she, she walks into the, the house. It's about like training some of the architects or whatever. And she goes, well, when are they going to wake up? And... And the other, oh, the guy. other guy, chick goes, they're not waking up. They're going, I mean, they're not going to sleep. They're waking up right now. And it's like that. No, no, <laughs> no, not that at all. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it, people are going to get there eventually where they go, this alternative lifestyle Some, that I live is, is Well, but better. see, this is what I was talking about in that civilizational split. It's like, there's going to be people who that's, there's, that's enough. And then there's going to be people, I mean, this is what the matrix is about. 
Well, but I know. It's like there's going to be people who are content to stay, and there's going to be people who are con- who don't or aren't. Well, that's what the new Matrix is about. Was that any good? I've heard not. It no. <laughs> I wish it no. was good. It was good. Here's the in, funny thing. There's it was this, good this, in theory. This is a whole genre it of was film. Good in concept. It wasn't good. <laughs> okay. it was. This is an interesting because I recently watched a video uh, talking about why the Truman Show was better than most people remember. Hmm. And I just feel like there's this whole trope of films that I have been personally, I have an interest in. And it is this kind of film w- in which the basic premise is the unknown is always better than the known. Right. Not, but the, that's too, I should, to be more specific, a unknown, the unknown freedom is always better than the known stagnation or, or something like that where it's like, mm-hmm. or, yeah. or in some ways the unknown truth is always better than the known lie maybe, but that, right, right. Cause that's like, that's what the Truman show's about. That's what the matrix is about. Right. In a not quite to that degree, but that's also what uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is kind of about. Hmm. It's not exactly. It's more of because that one's not as much of a one is fake and one is true. It's more of a the unknown possibility is there always worth exploring, even right. even if the known certainty is safe, more comfortable. Right, exactly. It's like there's an interesting. I'm curious about that trope of movie and why Jim Carrey's always in them. <laughs> because what other one is he in? He's, he's in, in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Spot, 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 spot. Someone, oh, I, I would say it's one of his best roles. And the the one thing that someone commented in that video was saying it's interesting how uh, comedians, when they go into acting and actually try to act serious roles, almost always do much better than. The opposite, like like people, normal, traditional dramatic actors trying to be in comedy, comedic movies. Right. It's like, it's an interesting how people who you would think are, you know, no, they're just the funny, silly. It's like they often end up making some of the most impactful series, like Robin Williams as well. Right. It's like, yeah, he's great whenever he's made a funny movie, but he's also incredibly good in a movie that's not meant to be funny. Right. And so it's, 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 that's an interesting... I'm curious about more films that might fall into that trope. I need to get on that one website. The trope. What is it? Was it you know, are you aware of this? The website? I think it's called TV Tropes. It basically categorizes all of these kinds of very weird. It'll be like heavily specific. It's like, yeah, this is a specific trope that is, you know, and these are all the shows and movies that you can see this kind of thing. In. And sometimes it's. Obviously, like the most generic is like the hero's journey trope where it's like that's in everything almost. But then sometimes it's like very weird, specific, circumstantial things. So I wonder if there's a TV trope for this kind of concept of reality as opposed to delusion. Right. (laughs) Right. Well, because it reminds me of, uh, and I think I've used this before, where the guy gets injected back into the Matrix and it's like he's controlling his environment and that he's saying I'm in control. I know that it's not real, but I'm choosing this anyway because it's preferable to oh, but whatever. He, but the movie is right to portray him as a coward and a traitor. Well, he, yeah, 100%. And that's why the new one doesn't really work. Cause it was almost a blurred that line. It was Isn't a bit he like, supposed to be dead or is that not the, is the same guy's not in it? No. Keanu Reeves is still no, not, no he didn't I'm talking about the guy who the whatever his name was oh no yeah Spider or something like him. that yeah. or whatever um, no he's uh, ci- no not Cypher Cypher him no but he's Cypher dead he's not... dead in the third movie is Cypher the, is Cypher's name he's the one who I think he's the one who chooses he betrays them and goes back in the Matrix maybe it is yeah anyway he I, dies it he's a blurs tool. the lines a little bit because it's like a it becomes a gray in the new movie where it's like, oh, well, you can choose this or you can yeah, kind of see that's certain people the choose third, the, to be to stay in the Matrix. But and see, the Matrix okay, did have like, a no. that's the one thing I liked about the Matrix is I actually like the second and third films more because it's a little bit like we're going to commit to our stance, which is a more controversial stance. But it's like, no, harsh reality is always better than comfortable delusion. Right. One hundred percent. And you are a wimp if you can't face it. We have to inject all these people out of the Matrix. No, some people don't want to leave. Yeah, we don't care. Well, there's an argument to be made that you can't 
force it on them either. That's also like, because that would in some in some ways that would be you could be sort of cruel to be like we're gonna subject you to the harsh reality against your will, even if you didn't know that it was a harsh reality yeah. or that you were in a delusion. That's a little. That it seems like the only people who could who could bear up the, under the weight of the harsh reality are those who willingly left the delusion. Hmm. You couldn't just rip someone out of the delusion and be like, here, life sucks, get used to it. Only because of timing. Mm. You have to go through certain events Because I don't think the pe- they w- those, anyone who didn't go through the process of choosing wouldn't, I don't think, be able to handle it. Well, but that's that's the whole point of the the, in the second movie, the whole architect guy where he's like, what we realized is the first world was too perfect, so now we have to actually add some degree of tumultuousness or whatever it is. And they actually build in this construct of like, oh yeah, every couple hundred years there's going to be like this escape and then re, you know, that's a that's a twisted, I mean, that's certainly A, it's certainly a quanti- quantifiable, like a computer would make those calculations for sure, in my estimation. But that's why I loved yeah. the whole Matrix story was it's like, to, to think about a, a computer going well, if I play this this scenario out for you know this well, that's given essentially, years, but you know, that is like, essentially that is in fact almost. I mean, I'm not going to say the, all of the Matrix, but certainly that concept is basically a direct rip off, not rip off, homage to which is the Dostoevsky? Is it called? I think it's Devils, where it's basically a perfect society would always collapse because people would destroy it willingly. <laughs> It's like if there was a utopia, the first thing anyone would do is destroy it because it was too boring. Right. So it's like that's basically the Matrix is like, yeah, that's right. Dostoevsky was right again. Oh, Donna, he was right again. Now I want a uh, sci-fi dystopian crime and punishment. Give me that. In fact, I bet you if I went online, someone would – it'll probably be an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> but someone's going to be able to say, yeah, that exists and here's what it's called. It's probably an enemy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of if I is there even anything I can think of that would fall under that category. I oh. don't know that I know. I'm sure it exists. Now I am curious, actually. Gotta find it, and we'll come back and let you know. <laughs> and apparently that'll be yeah. I'll have an answer for my weebness. <laughs> well. I don't know if I've got a uh, that went all over the place, so I don't know that there's any bow to wrap. Oh, I that thought up it was with. great. Well, sure, but it was still all over the place. <laughs> we have to... talked about all kinds of weaves. They talked about hands all over the internet. <laughs> don't. It's only gonna get worse from there. <laughs>